Well, welcome back. We are at week four. Yeah, week four. So how's everyone doing with the practice schedule? I got that up here. And um, yeah, you can let me know. Shoot me an email or you can say something in the comments. It would be great. And because um, it, it, it does actually work as long as you put it to use. And it's a, it's a very helpful tool to get somewhere. I know everyone's pretty busy doing um, working a job or taking care of family that um, you know, does not always have a lot of time to work on practicing. So anyhow, this is a schedule that you could you could break it down into, you know, um, so far we have the finger exercise and we are pop over to that. Let's see. Yeah, so we're doing the, you know, I would say, you know, maybe five minutes in a on a finger exercise called a pentatonic. So let me um, throw sort of a metronome. Let's see. Metronome about, I think we talk about 80, but it doesn't have to be there. Um, I think that's a good place to start though. And maybe you can move up 10 clicks a week. Kind of depends on how that's going. Um, but you want to make sure you don't move too soon. And there's some things you want to kind of watch for, like um, really got to work at keeping your right hand on the guitar because that's that's really important. And if you <clears throat> try and I mean it's it's not natural to rest your hands on the string, so we naturally want to keep our hands up off the guitar, but work at trying to keep it on there. And that's just for the single string; it doesn't doesn't go for the chords. So let me play again here, and I'll. And I gotta turn my volume up so I can hear it. Two, three, four. Big stretch. Put my fingers right next to the frets. I think I'll have to keep my finger there, but I sometimes do. Now where I put my thumb, that helped me with those big stretches. You know, it's my thumbs more back over here, as opposed to naturally our thumb wants to be like this, back over this way. So, but you want to work at trying to gradually move it over and kind of get it more back behind middle ring finger. I probably mentioned this before. So what you could also do now with this is take it backwards. Um, I don't know if you tried that yet, but it goes like this backwards. A little more challenging because now we got to go against gravity. So we got to remember to move our arm and change strings. Hopefully I'm going slow enough that you can play along with me. If not, it's okay. Maybe I'm too slow. So there is a right hand exercise and um, going up. And this is up even though we're going towards the floor and then come back down. So going up higher in pitch and then come back. So let's go into our next one, which would be our quasi. So quasi, I think last week we introduced um, alternate picking. So that makes a challenge. And let me see, I'm gonna start at 50. 40 is still a good place to be. And this one's, this one's a bit harder. So when you add the um, alternate pick, that definitely makes it a little more challenging. And you're trying to remember what your left hand's doing, what your right hand's doing. So that's why it's important to keep that right hand on the guitar. And eventually this just becomes a habit. You don't think about it and you can focus more on this hand. But right now we'll, uh, so we'll do this at 50. It might be a little fast for some, but that's okay. Um, and you don't have to play it at 50 yet. Or if you can, that's great. Um, but 40 is fine. So here we go. Two, alternate pick. Three, four. So we got down, up, down, up, down, up, 
く。Trying to keep all my notes connected. Long notes, legato, another term. Get ready to go up one fret. Go back. Then move your arm when you change strings. Hold on to that note and then put your pinky up there. Up as far as you want. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. So, yeah, you can just keep going. And probably wherever it feels comfortable. Usually somewhere in here. Start going backwards, backwards like this. So basically, instead of going up one fret, you're going down one. Still odd number frets. So every time I get to the end, I go down one. Down is towards the headstock. Lower in pitch. Back to the beginning. So um, yeah, and then as you get to the quicker tempos, then it doesn't take as long to go up and then back down in a circle, kind of. So um, try if you feel pretty good. And it's like, oh yeah, try going back down. It'll probably take you I don't know, five or so minutes, but that's not a bad idea. This is probably the most challenging one of the two exercises, and but it's the most beneficial too because um, it's going to help out coordinate your fingers. And your right hand picking the the right correct string finger, and so um, I would say if you were going to do one or of the two, the tremolo or quasi, I would say spend more time on the quasi because that's the one that's going to you're going to benefit the most from. All right, so from quasi we we'll go into last week's chord, which. Um, our new chord was A minor. And let me see, I'm gonna go switch my page here so I can see. All right, so our A minor chord. So that one's very, I don't know if you remember, it's just like the E, set on different strings, but it sounds different. That's so kind of convenient, so same shape. And so with this chord progression, you got some common fingers you can kind of keep there. So like our A minor, and then your middle finger can stay there. And then I think we're talking about switching back and forth. So you may even just do this back and forth. Coordinate your fingers, get them used to going back and forth, back and forth, repetition. Yeah, and then um, E minor D to D. Then you go D D. Then you go E to A minor. This one's interesting because you got the same shape. You're just picking up and hopping over strings. So let me play this one. I'm gonna do it at 60. Um, but we're gonna do the chord progression A minor, E minor, D, E. And here we go. Two, three with the strum. Again. 
All right. So that was last week at 60. And um, so we have a new chord, which you already see. So speaking of C, let's go to the chord of C. So C is a very common chord. Um, a lot of songs on piano, I say a lot of songs, but if you ever play piano, um, you'll notice that there's a lot of chords that are C, F, I'll do the F, here's the F. F's kind of a, it's hard on guitar. And then G chord, we'll get to the G. But, um, so the C chord, it's a little bit challenging on the guitar, not so much on the piano, you're just playing the C, E, G, white keys on piano. So, yeah, but the A minor, I, I put this together so the A minor, um, the C follows A minor. So you only have to move one finger. So you just pick up one finger and move it over to the fifth string. So the ring finger is just picking up, going to the fifth string. I'm sliding over a little bit with my middle finger just to help out the reach. Try to always, if you can, try to keep your finger next to the fret. So like my first finger here is, but obviously I can't keep my middle finger there because it's going to push my ring finger out of the way. So, but once I move for my ring finger, then I'm going to slide my middle finger over too, just to help get that stretch because that's, that's a bit of a stretch. So, and, and if you're back a little ways and you're going to get kind of buzzing sound. So there's my, you know, and that's because I'm not next to the fret. So if I get next to the fret, especially these bigger strings too, you want to not work so hard at pressing down and killing your fingers and then, then you end up, your fingers are sore. So use those frets to your advantage and get as close as you can to them as, as possible. And that's for everything with these chords, same thing with the exercises, if you haven't figured that out yet. So anyhow, um, and then on our uh, PDF, we have a, a repeat sign, two double dots. And I've been repeating most time anyways, but so anytime you see music with two dots at the beginning and the end, you just play it twice. And that's just kind of an easier way of um, letting the performer know what's what's going on. So let's do this. I'm going to slow it down to 50 since it's a new chord progression. And let's do this 50 and here we go one two three four c chord slide those fingers out e i'm gonna repeat this and play a minor Slide C. Hop over to D. That's a big hop. Back to E. And you could end on the first chord or, or whatever. Yeah, these are just exercises. So it's just a practice to get um, you know different strum patterns. And that, as as you kind of notice, each week there's a new strum pattern and in a new chord um and as you notice this week there's a new something else so um anyhow so oh i didn't change my chords hey i'm glad somebody's on it i'm not hello let's see what do i need to get a ah there we go okay Sorry about that. Well, you have the PDF, so you know where we're going. Obviously, I don't. So thanks for the heads up. So A minor, C, D, E. Um, yeah, so I would say probably the, the most challenging change would be going from C to D. Because you have to pick up all three fingers and then put them down. So what I'm trying to do, and this will come with lots of repetition, is what I'm doing is I'm forming the shape before I put my fingers down. Now I couldn't do this with my right hand because my right hand's not used to these shapes, but with repetition and, and practice, they will get used to these shapes. 
So yeah, I would say go back and forth from C to D. And that's probably your, probably the most challenging change of all these chords that you have here so far. So um, yeah, A, D, and E, very simple. Um, A minor. Yeah, so yeah, and you're gonna play, you'll see a lot of C and D. I know it's with guitar, there's a lot of G, C, D. Now it's not the friendliest key to sing in for a lot of us, but um, we end up getting songs in there. So, and then we could always use a capo. If, if, if you're wondering what a capo is, you can send me a message or something like that later. Um, anyhow, so that's your new chord for the week is the C chord. And so then we got something brand, brand new. Let me see if I can switch this over to our finger style. All right, let's switch my pick over here. Okay, so finger style now we lose the pick. So I put my pick down here and could have written some more directions on here, but basically I'll explain here. So the P is, and this is on Spanish, P I N A. So P is thumb. I is the index and the M is middle and then the A is ring. It's all in Spanish. You can look those words up. I won't try to pronounce them because I'll terribly mess them up. Anyhow, so what we're doing is we're using, we're not using the pinky. So that's, so we only have to worry about four fingers. But the challenge with the finger style is, is it's now it's all right hand. So your right hand is doing all the work. Let's see if I can. Um, maybe maybe you can see maybe the ankle you might be able to see it better um so my thumbs going down on the fifth string and then my first finger and i'm just i'm not pulling like this and that's what we, everyone naturally wants to do is just pull out in the way don't want to do that you you want to keep it very i'd say quiet meaning that i'm not busy bumping around um might look cool but it's hard to, to stay consistent if you're pulling on the strings and yanking on it so you what you want to do with these three fingers and i got some nails here too that helps me out it gives me a little more um kind of like a pick but it kind of gives me a little bit more more edge to it a little more pop um with the flesh of the fingers it, it's it's not as not as punchy sounding i guess um so anyhow so yeah i grow my nails a little bit just to help out with finger picking so when i'm when i'm picking i let my finger kind of slide off the string i don't pull and i don't get my nail underneath it and I don't get my finger underneath and pull on it, yank it. I mean, there's a technique for that, but we're not working on that. Um, so yeah, you want your finger just to kind of slide off and off the string. So so it's it's a it's a it's definitely it's another technique that's going to take repetition, obviously. Um, so. Let me play the exercise. You can see it in here. And um, let's see if I can do it in a metronome. The metronome. Yeah. So I have, the, you can see the tab there. Um, let me explain a little bit about the tab. So you got the chords. You know, so basically, we're doing these three chords the A, A, and then we got the D chord. And the E chord. So we're just doing the first three chords that we start with. And then um, you, you got a, an order. So to, to understand how to read this, so the zero, when you see the zero in the tab, the zero is just means open string. So you see there the first, first zero. And that's that line there. If you notice, there's six lines. So it's starting from, of course, it's starting from the bottom. So let me see if I can turn this around. You can see it sense so the bottom the big string right here is is the one there that you see there's no numbers 
on it, at least on the first two, until you get to E. And you get to open. So that's E. And then you have, um, so E, then A, G, B, and then E. There you go. So the numbers correspond to the fret. So if you look there, you got the zero, so that's a fifth string, zero. And then the two is my uh, first finger. So I'm playing my A like this. My first finger is on the two third string. So you got a zero, two, and then you got another two, which is my third finger. So you got zero, two, two, zero. So, and these are right from the chords. So there is a pattern. It's, it's not terribly difficult, but um, pretty much the pattern is, is it's going your thumb, first finger, middle finger, ring finger. And that's, that's it. So your thumb is going to be changing strings. It'll play these three strings, the E string, the A string, the D string. And then your, your first three fingers are just going to play the third, second, and first string. It's going to do the same thing every time. So it makes it a little more easier, but still it's, it's, you're still training your right hand how to hold these, um, these shapes that are, or play these, do these things that the fingers have never done before. So um, let me try with a metronome. I'm going to say, all right, if I put it at 60, and it's going to be per note. It's not going to be in time. So if I do it per note, it's and four string, and I change into the D. Then go to the fifth string. And here I'm going to jump to the E. And then the fifth string. And then the A. Same thing at the beginning. So this is our introduction to finger style. And I definitely recommend using a metronome for this because you want to you want to get your fingers moving because a lot of times they just you know they want everything to be perfect and the other thing too is you'll notice which is which is good about the finger style is you're going to notice if like if i don't have that finger pressed down hard enough it's kind of muted so so you go oh all right so i need to work on those too so that's the one of the good things about finger style is, is you're not strumming with a pick you're using your individual fingers. So you kind of get individual strings right now. So then you, you start catching, oh, wait, I'm not, I'm not playing that right. I, I, I'm muting out a string there. So I'm going, uh oh, something's wrong there. Let's see, let me see, uh, let me do. Yeah, so a lot of times it's really getting on your fingertips. And then trying to get, as I know the D chord is challenging. Try to get as close as you can to the, fret that helps so like my middle finger is right next to that fret and then my first finger for the d chord this will probably be the the most challenging chord of all is that d and and so yeah you just have to work work on it and if you i would say uh if you want just just keep playing the same four um you know that on the a chord you just play the same four you get used to that and maybe add the flip songs. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. And then go back and forth between those strings. That's one way to practice it. And you know, you know, think about changing. And then, you know, you could just work on each group of eight notes there individually. do that over and over. Now with a metronome, I know I was at 60, so, and you could probably even go with 50, it's fine. Uh, it was kind of slow, especially when you're playing an individual, but it's a... Uh... Thank you. 
है So you notice with the E chord, you don't play the fourth string at all. So you could, if you want, and if you notice when I went to the E chord, um, I really just got my first finger there because that's the second note. And then I could put my middle finger up there. And then, so I don't have to put all three fingers down for the E chord. So there's a little bit of a shortcut, um, but you could, yeah, you could just leave that root ring finger out if you like and that'll get you through it quicker but um the challenge would be is um with them with the open strings which is which is great that gives you more time to get to the chord so you don't have to have all your fingers down when you start and that's what we tend to do is we want to go um and make sure we get all our fingers there and then we go so and you want to get as soon as possible away from looking at your right hand and just playing by feel. So you just have to practice not looking. And just what I do, I just I visualize, okay, um, that's the right string. Especially when I'm looking at music, I, I, I can't keep my eyes on my hands and the music all at the same time. So I have to be able to play by feel and that's again it's muscle memory um, repetition over and over all right so that is your your work for this week and uh, you know metronome setting you know for this one it could it could be anywhere it could be 40 to 50 um, if you're feeling like uh, I'm feeling pretty good let me see if I could do 100 okay so this would be 100 because I'm doubling it so it'd be like this so, uh. all right, so that is basically everything um, for this week. And we'll just keep on going. If you guys have been here for all four weeks, I applaud you. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of work, and um, but I think you can, um, you could do it. You just, you just have to, you know, be diligent, practice, you know, five, six days out of a week. That'd be great. You know, set up your practice schedule. That really helps out. And um, yeah, you'll get there, and just, um, just keep on practicing. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email. Um, but that will be all, and I thank you very much, and we'll see you.